De lejos estoy del suelo donde Would you read it for the camera? I think yeah. it's Dear Mr. Stanton, I have long been a fan of yours. You are a, a American original. I don't think you get all the credit you are due. Your talent is overlooked because you make it look so easy. I may be just a old redneck country boy, but I know natural talent when I see it. Too many pretty boys on the screen now. Give me a, a actor with real guts and a natural everyman ability. Please send me a, a autographed photo. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Charlie Spencer. Originally, I was supposed to do that scene in Repo Man with a gun, where he pulls, he uses blanks for that uh, with the black guy he did. The one that Cy Richardson did. Yeah, I think he. Uh, that was I was supposed to do that originally. I think Alex was pissed off. I mean, at that time <laughs> we got in a big a couple of big hassles on the film. Have you ever thought of it about directing? Have you directed stuff? No, uh, one time Francis Coppola, I was working with him on a film, One from the Heart, and uh, he said, Harry Dean, you direct this scene. No director of his stature or any director in my lifetime has ever said that. <laughs> and I directed the scene. Fred Forrest and Terry Garr. You've done over 50 TV credits and over 100 film credits. Might be 170 now. I don't know. That was, I, I don't know. I'm, yeah. So it's a lot of work. It's a around. lot of longevity in a field where a lot of people don't have much longevity. Why you think you have such longevity? Everything, as far as I'm concerned, everything is predestined. Everybody's scared shitless of that word, predestined. It's all predestined. Everything's, this is predestined. We didn't know all this was going to go down today. And people can't accept, generally cannot accept that. But that's part of the game that's being played, too. Some people accept it. I accept it. Other people don't. So you don't think things in your life shape what's going to happen to you? Like, you were in the Navy when you were, like, what, maybe 19, 20 years old, something like that? Yeah, so. You were in World War II. Yeah. You don't think that changed your outlook on, on anything that of has happened to you did. after that? Of course. Everything uh, changed my outlook. Right. I mean, you did a lot of theater. You know, you were in New York. You know, what made you decide that, that you wanted to come Again, to Again, there's no answer to that. Don't you follow what I'm trying to say? Well, Everybody wants an answer to why I did this, why all this happened. Ultimately, there's no answer to it. Everything happens the way it's going to happen. Nobody's in charge. It's all going to go down. The, you know, Iraq, the war, Napoleon, serial killers, wars, all of it. You never know what's going to happen next. We think we're in charge 10 seconds from now. None of us in this room know what we're going to be thinking or saying. So who the fuck's in charge? <laughs> Do you know the word noosphere? I've heard the word. I, You've to heard define it? Define it for me. Noosphere is the sphere of human consciousness and mental activity on the planet, and which is uh, a phenomenon that happened when the planet gradually evolved and men had evolved, and they became conscious. There was consciousness and awareness and uh, the reflection of everything that's happening. And that's the noosphere, especially related to its influence on the biosphere, all the living things, and the evolution of that consciousness. Now, that's all happening as one huge organic whole. But is the noosphere a constant? Well, it's constant thing? until it goes. Right. Eventually, the Earth's not going to be here. And at one time, it wasn't here. Don't you get it? <laughs> and it's all going to go. Well, that's kind of a, it sounds like a nihilist cop out of some, it, in it, some ways. Total nihilism. What's wrong with that? Does nihilism excuse you from responsibility? What's nihilism? Well, what you pretty much just said a belief that. You're things, nothing. That events, that you're nothing, that, yeah. that events are happening regardless of you. Ultimately, there is no individual you entity. That's an illusion, but that's part of the, the noosphere, the game that consciousness is playing on the planet. And again, I'm, I'm not sitting here trying to be all wise and pontificating and, you know, and my son, uh, let me tell you, uh, like that. There's a lot of enlightened guys around today, just as enlightened as Christ was, or Buddha, or any of them. There, a German guy, Eckhart Tolle. Yeah. Uh, Tony Parsons. This guy in France. There's guys all over that are 
and Einstein too, and uh, Heisenberg, some of the atomic physicists, they arrived at the same point, that science can't solve the mystery of the universe. <laughs> so you'll ultimately end up with no answer. It's just what is. So that's, that's, that's the Buddhist concept, that it's an illusion. It's not only an illusion, an illusion it's insane. And one guy said it was um, uh, to realize when man thought he was a separate individual with a separate soul created a violent situation. So how much of your philosophical beliefs do you bring into the roles that you play? I don't have any philosophical beliefs. How much of your notion of existence do you bring into the roles you play? Do I bring into it? Does, does the way you look at the world influence the way you act? In a, in a film? Obviously. You know, Harry, the ending of Repo Man, you say something. You go, I'd rather die on my feet than live on my live knees. Live on my knees, yeah. Yeah. Um, that was a, a Miano Zapata. Zapata. Yeah. Did you do that a lot in films? Do you bring in your, you know, general, I mean, all kinds of knowledge and try to infuse it into roles, like okay, in lines? Yeah when, it, yeah, when the opportunity presents itself, yeah. You work within a community. Is that community important to you in any way? Nothing's important, ultimately. So when a director tells you to do something that you feel is not truthful, can you do that? No. Why won't you just say, OK, it doesn't really matter. It might, might make me look like a jerk, but so what? Well, all of this I'm talking about, nothing matters and everything, that's part of the game. I, I'm playing the game, but I know it's a game. Who are the greatest actors that have influenced you? Of course, well, Marlon, of course, you know. And Marlon and I were good friends, too. We talked about all these things all the time for hours on the phone before he died. And he, Mar Marlon asked me once, he said, what do you think of me? And I said, I think you're nothing. <laughs> he was. <laughs> he knew what I was talking about. It was yeah. the whole Eastern concept. One guy phrased it, to realize you're nothing is wisdom. To realize you're everything is love or pure intelligence, pure awareness. And ulti that ultimately that can't be defined in words. It's beyond words. Beyond, it's beyond consciousness. And that's a hard sell. <laughs> but it's true. Do you spend a lot of time thinking about the roles you want to accept, or do you believe that it's just better, hey, man, just throw yourself in the mix and, and, and no, work? I read the script. It, uh, it, it depends on what the script has to say, the writing. Is it intelligent writing? Is the dialogue good? Is it believable? Is what the film's saying makes sense? Or what impact it's going to have on an audience? All of these things factor into what you of want course. to do and what you want to do. Because I think I read somewhere, too, in going through things, uh, a quote by you saying that you had missed meetings and had not done things that you thought you might, you, know, you could have done and made your career more successful. Oh yeah, I could be more richer and famous than, than I am. I had opportunities to. But somewhere at the time the decisions came up, I, I said no. And uh, again, there's no answer to that. That's just the way Are I... Are there regrets for that? For a moment, but then I realized how totally useless that is but uh, that's the way things happen again I'm not in charge of it everything evolves that way and that's what is but you know and the I other... can't sit around and regret it I might sit around and regret it but that's that's part of the big picture too I might not <laughs> yeah because you know what the other but, side of that quote was the what? other side of the quote said that that you said yeah but it would have taken a lot more of my time yeah I didn't want to I didn't want to work 24 hours a day every day that's why I've never directed. I could be a good director. It could, it's too much work. I don't want to work. I wasn't geared. I wasn't genetically wired that way when I was born. All these decisions happened the way they happened. Would you be considered a difficult person to work with? Do you think directors consider you difficult or easy? If I'm right, I'm, I'm, I'll be difficult, yeah. I take a project because I trust the people I'm with, the director, the other actors, the writers, the script. Are they all talented? And uh, if that's not there, then I don't want to. I don't want to be involved in it. So you had training. Your whole background was in you, was in theater. Do you yeah. think theater made you a more meticulous actor? Well, yeah. anybody can be a film actor. If you've got a good director and a good script, 
especially a good director, you can take a guy off the street and he'll be good in it. Who's the best director you've ever worked with? I can't pick one and say he's the best of all. Not the best. Maybe who did you have the most affinity with? I, all the good ones I've worked with. I worked with Alfred Hitchcock. I worked with John Huston. I worked with Martin Scorsese. I worked with Francis Coppola. David Lynch, brilliant director. They're all brilliant. They're yeah. all great directors. And what do you think makes a great director? If they know their job, if they know what they're doing, they have a vision, they have a, uh, if they've got their shit together, you know. And have you ever worked with people who haven't had their shit together? Of course. But, but who have still made interesting films? Yeah, Alex Cox. <laughs> I'm not attacking Alex. It's just we had differences, and he knows this. But that's, uh, you know, these are just the ego, this is ego, different, uh, you know, conflicts. It, do you look at yourself in, in a sage-like way at all? In certain situations, yeah. So you think you're... But it's a role. It's, a, it's just a role, you know. But uh, life's a role, right? Huh? Life's a role. You just said it's all a game. Yeah, it's all a movie. All of this, this, this here, all of this, all of us here, and the war in Iraq, the whole fucking thing, it's all a, it's all a movie. Okay, now you're and it's in the can, and no, and it's... It's not in the can. Oh, Warren yeah, Rock it's in the fucking, the can, fucking can, That's what you don't understand. You think you have some influence on it? You think you can save the world? I think you'd change some things, yeah. No, that was written. It's, it is written. But that makes it sound like it's the frickin' biblical. You sound like Pat Robertson when you talk like that. It is written. Pat Robertson, some... that idiot? I'm not saying that. I'm saying everything is going to happen the way it's going to happen. And you have no, nobody has anything to do with it. Don't you understand what So I'm you saying? don't think if we could have defeated Bush in the last election, this frickin' war might not have happened? That had to happen the way it happened. It all happens. Everything happens, and nobody's in charge of it. Don't you get it? Have you procreated? Huh? Have you procreated? Procreated? Yeah. Why? why, well, why is this, what's because that I just think, what about future generations? Do you think in terms of future generations? No care less about future generations. You don't care what happens to people after this one? After you're gone, do you think anything makes any difference? I'm not responsible, no. Would you rather leave things better or worse? Uh, I don't care. Ultimately, it's not, it's not up, uh, it's no, there's no I that, that has anything to do with it. You, this is what you're not getting. I care about everything, but uh, I, I don't, so what, you know, and that sounds nihilistic again and everything, but at my age, where I am now, where my head is now, it's, uh, you know, it's, ultimately, it's not, it's not important, and I don't say that in a negative sense, ultimately, it's not important, it's all going to go, it's just a fucking dream, man, all of it. And I'm, it's not being cynical or nihilistic, or you can put all kind of labels on it, but it's, uh, it's just what is, and uh, period. The guy who says, uh, you know, row, row, row your boat gently, gently down, down the, the stream. stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream, and that's what it is to me. Let's play it, man. Row, row, row your boat. Row, row, down the stream. row your boat. Merrily, 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 merrily. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Row your boat. Gently down the stream. Row your boat. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Merrily, merrily, merrily. Life is but a dream. Merrily, merrily, merrily. Life is but a dream. Gently down the street, barely, 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 life was barely, barely, barely. So, hey, what are you doing now? What's um, I'm doing a series on the Mormons, HBO. Tom Hanks producing it, his company, called Big Love. It's about the Mormon polygamists. I'm playing a patriarch. You know, eleven wives. The youngest one's fourteen years old. Would you find it hard to play a believer? Believe it's it. no harder than living uh, than this is. <laughs> it's all part of the game. It's all, it's all a game. It's all a movie. It's all a game. And uh, there you are. So, Harry, any nice. thoughts about um, about Repo Man? The fact that it's lived on this long that. Uh, 
this character, this everyman character that, that the people see in Bud, they so strongly relate to. Um, yeah, that was Alex's writing. and It was his concept. But don't you think you bring an everyman quality to a lot of the roles that you play? I bring myself for whatever that is. and uh, There was another quote I saw here. We were talking about Paris, Texas, and you said, um, I took the same approach as I would to any other part. I play myself as totally as I possibly can. Yeah. My own Harry Dean Stanton act. Yeah. What does that mean? You play, you mean you try to become as much of you as you can in the roles that you play? Yeah, of course. Who else can I be? I mean, you went from being Bud, and then a couple weeks later, you were Travis. Yeah, but every human being that, that watches Bud or Travis or Marlon Brando in a role or any actor in a role, any, every human being in the audience can identify with everything the guy's doing. Everybody's experienced everything or at least thought about it or felt what's going on on the screen. It's all connected. There's, no, there's nothing unusual about it. You have to be still and wait. And, be still and know. That's, my, that's on the wall up there. Be still and know. The ending of Repo Man. The fact that, that the kid transcends and you end up getting shot in the chest and laying in the, you know, dying in the parking lot. Well, I, yeah. we don't know. Why did he transcend? Why didn't you go off? There you go again, man. You think there's an answer to that? Why didn't you get to go? That's the way life is. It's all a movie. It's in the can. <laughs> it was written. It's the way it was written. Surrender to it. Roll your boat. Yeah, I've got a thing here. One little thing. I got. I don't know what page it's on. It's a book on Marlon. His auction. They auctioned off all his stuff. I've got a quote in here. The tears I shed yesterday have become rain. <laughs> <laughs> Marlon, God, I love that guy. He was great. I like an, a quote that not many people have heard of Einstein's. He says, the new religion must be a cosmic religion. It should transcend personal God and avoid dogma and theology. Covering both the natural and spiritual, it should be based on a religious sense arising from the experience of all things natural and spiritual as a meaningful whole. It said Buddhism answers this description. If there's any religion that could cope with modern scientific needs, it would be Buddhism. So he arrived at the same place the Buddhists did and the Taoists. Taoism, the same thing. There's another one that's very in the same vein from the Tao Te Ching, the Taoism, you know. Right. It says, uh, if you don't realize your source, you stumble in sorrow and confusion, which is Buddhism, is suffering. Right. If you realize where you come from, realize where you come from, you naturally become tolerant, disinterested or detached, amused, kind-hearted as a grandmother, dignified as a king, immersed in the wonder of it all, or the Tao, you can deal with whatever life brings you, and when death comes, you're ready. Seeing everything as a meaningful whole, religion and everything. The one connected whole. One connected whole. Yeah, all of it. And Jung on my door over there, as a matter of fact, I've got a great quote from Carl Jung. It said, the self is a circle whose center is everywhere, and whose circumference is nowhere. <laughs> Nihilism? <laughs> no. But there's a little Japanese poem. It's a short poem. Old frog, old, no. Old pond, frog jumps in, splash. Yeah, that's enough.
<laughs> That's it. Harry? Okay, thank you, pal. Thank you, pal. Really appreciate it. I appreciate the time and, uh, and the insights, man. Yeah. If you talk to Alex, tell him I love him, okay? I, I definitely will tell him that you love him. You yeah. guys made a great film together. Yeah, and it's still playing. It's still <laughs> playing all the time. Ultimately, you have to say nothing's important. Then that's not a, a negative point of view. It's just what is. <laughs> yeah. And everybody knows it. Everybody's aware of it. There's no corner on this, this market that I'm talking about. Christ was trying to say the same thing. We'll go down, back up down there. Yeah, and, uh, I like how into that driveway. 